Father, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you that you dwell within us. And everywhere we go, God, amen, everywhere we, we stand, the atmosphere changes. And God, I thank you that we are light bearers of you. I thank you, God, that we carry your word. We carry that in our hearts. We live a life, Father, redeemed from sin. And we live a life knowing who we serve. We serve a good God, a loving God, a God that is so good to us that he gave us his only begotten son. Lord, we know that in our hearts. Amen. We thank you with everything that we have, Father, for what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, that the atmosphere changes in our hearts, in our homes, in our marriages. Father, in in circumstances, in our jobs, in the places where we stand and where we put our feet, the atmosphere changes because you are with us. We so thank you, God. We, We just love you and appreciate you. We are just so in awe of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. God is so good. Um, if you have your Bibles, just open up to Jude chapter 1. I, I want to I um, uh, minister um, this morning on ca- love casts out fear. Amen. Love casts out fear. And so the, um, the thought here is fear is a complicated subject, okay? Like, let's just say that, get it out there. Fear is complicated. There's a lot of things about you. There's books written on it. And there's all sorts of stuff written about it fear. But I, I want to, but I want to think that God is, God is a good God and he's a merciful God. And though fear is a complicated subject, I think that God has a simple solution. And I know God is a good God and he has a simple solution. And um, I don't want to oversimplify something that is a bit, but I want you to grasp something this morning that if you will get a hold of, I think you will overcome fear. Is that good? Oh, I love it. Glory to God. Okay, so, you know, it's just taken hold of what God has for us. And he's placed things in the Word of God for us to be able to, to, to reach out into and get revelation on. And so in Jude chapter 1, verse 20, 21 says this. But you, beloved. I, I, I mean, just stop there. But you, beloved. Okay, it is like who you are. You are the beloved. You're in the beloved. So he's talking to you, and he's not talking to you, the person next to you, and he's not talking to the wife, he's talking to you. When you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, you are in the Beloved. What a, great, what a great thing. So, you know, one of the things we have to establish to be able to cast out fear is to understanding who you are in Christ. Okay? And so once you've understood that you are in the Beloved, that is a real, it's an anchor point. It's a foundational point. It's something that you can say, you know what, this is good, I like this, I'm in the Beloved. That's who I am. You know, I, I, I love that thought, you know, and I, I like the idea that God calling me beloved, you know, because when I read the book of Daniel, I read there that God says, uh, Daniel, Daniel, highly beloved of God. And when I used to first, read, I said, oh, gosh, he's a lucky man. He's a lucky dude. God's calling him beloved. Oh, wow. Could you imagine God saying that about me? And then the thought dropped in. He says, God thinks exactly that about you. Because you are beloved of by the Father. Not because of what you've done, but because of who you have accepted. You have received Jesus Christ, his gift to humanity for salvation. And when God looks at you, he goes, I love you for that. I love you. That, that's awesome. You're in the beloved now because you've received Christ as your saviour. So, you know, that's anchor points. That's something that we can get a hold of. So, but you, beloved... Build yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. When you're feeling down, just sing in tongues, worship God in tongues. Lift up and build yourself up in your most holy faith by speaking in tongues. Then it says in verse 21, keep yourself in the love of God. Keep yourself. I underline that. And um, eagerly awaiting the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to everlasting life. So keep yourself in the love of God. So this is a command where it says to keep ourselves. So he's, God is asking us to, it's a command, keep yourself in my love. Keep yourself there. Don't, don't move away. Don't, don't go to the left and the right of it. Don't, don't, be, don't, don't allow anything to, to rob you of my love for you. So keep yourself in my love, in the love of God. 
Okay, so put off fear. Many times in life we face the battle of fear, and I think everybody has. I don't think there's anybody exempt from that in this room. I think that it's a, uh, something that we all face from time to time. Is a fear. There's fear of flying, fear of spiders, fear of snakes, fear, fear, fear. It goes on and on and on. We can be fearful of all manner of things. We can be looking at the world right now, and there can be some sorts of fear. Fear of the financial crisis, fear of things that are happening, fear of, of what's going on within the world structure, what's happening. You know, but we, know we, we, we can be fearful of that or we can l- be resting in the love of God. You know, and when we rest in the love of God, we understand that God has everything in control. So God knows all things. He understands all things. He, he knows what's happening. In fact, the Word of God tells us very clearly that as we as Christians, we're actually in front of the eight ball. We're not behind the eight ball. We're in front of it. You know, it's a pool game where you're playing and at the end you're always chasing the eight ball around trying to sink it. Well, we're in front of it. It's already down. Okay, because God has given us His Word. And in His Word, He says, these things must happen. There are things that are happening in the world right now that must happen. Because God is shaping and moving and pushing and, and doing things to, uh, to, to move things in a place and in a way where he can return. Hallelujah. God's going to come back. He's going he's to call us home. And, but this has to happen. There has to be change on the, on the planet for this to happen. And so as we love God and as we rest in this place, we keep ourselves in the love of God and we're not taking our eyes off that and we're looking at this or that or everything else that's around us. We focus our attention on God. So because fear is, is in the world and there's, there's fear about all sorts of things, but, but, this, um, but you know, we can do all, all manner of things to, to try and, and you know, push that back. You know, we can tell ourselves, don't worry, you know, be happy. Um, fear not, you know, just, it's okay, everything's going to be all right. We can read that word, I'm going to read something, I'm going to read something. We can do these sorts of things, but this on its own will not remove fear. And, I, and the reason why is because fear is not logical. Fear doesn't have a logical step in it. It's just something that comes. It's a spiritual thing that comes on you and it, it's not logical. And so you can't logically work it out. You have to do something, you have to do something which is amazing. And, and I, I'm going to have sort of the answer for you down here, but I want you to understand that it, because it's not logical, it's an emotional response to a room that has the lights off. Okay? So fear is like an emotional response to darkness. So we go into a dark room, you know, we can become fearful. It's a, it's a response. You know, like, I have my grandchildren come over, and, and even when they came past, there was a, one, you know, the, the light was off in the spare room where they and she says, Oh, it's very dark in there. And so I turned on, so here, look at this, click. The light comes on. Oh, okay. Everything's okay. Because the light's on. Once the light's on, it dispels darkness, it dispels fear, it pushes things away. See, we need to turn the light on. The light on with regards to fear. Fear, by definition, operates in darkness. Um, and, it's, and it calls us into this darkness so that it can begin its torment. So it, it operates within darkness and then it calls us into this place and says, you know, fear is going to call you in and then, then it starts moving on you. It starts causing torment. That's what Scripture says. Fear causes torment. So fear is a threat to success. It can cause us to make bad decisions. When we begin to be overwhelmed by fear, there's, it, it can actually cause us to, to make bad decisions and, um, and, 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 and may even um, lead to, to failure. It, it, in some cases, uh, even our endeavours can fail or be hindered by fear. Jesus didn't just manage the work of the devil. Jesus destroyed the work of the devil on the cross. So what Jesus has done is he hasn't just managed it somehow to cover it over, but he has destroyed it. And so what we need to understand is is in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, it says, Therefore, since the children have flesh and blood, he himself also shared the same things. This is Jesus. So that by his death, he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, uh, and might free those who were slaves all um, uh, slaves, all their lives, because they were terrified by death, and there was this this terrifying of, of death can become a. I, I speak to people and I says, you know, uh, you, 
how, how do you feel about dying? Don't talk to me about dying. I just can't, I can't even think about it. You know, this is unsafe, folks. And I think, well, you know, the, terif- the terrifying thing about death is that people don't know where they're going to go. But we do. We have Jesus Christ. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's the one who's come into our life. And we are not terrified by death. In fact, I, I say bring it on. You know, there are times where I, I, I say, you know what, now's a good time for the rapture, Lord. Uh, or, you know, should I die? You know, I know where I'm going and I'm kind of looking forward to it. In fact, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> Um, I'm looking forward to Jesus being on the throne. I'm looking forward to Jesus ruling and reigning. I'm looking forward to the eternity that we have with him. I'm looking forward to the, just to, to see everything that he has planned for us throughout all eternity. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so the only way to defeat fear is to cast it off. Okay, so in 1 John 4 verse 18, it says this, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Okay, so this is, this is, this is the, the scripture I want to sort of look at. It says, there is no fear in love. That's a, it's, it is amazing. There's no fear in love. So perfect love casts out fear. So let's have a look at that. Let, let's, let's see how this works. Because this is the simplicity of defeating fear that, that I, I find when I read that scripture. And when God began to show me the what it actually means. So perfect love casts out fear. Therefore, we will have to know what this perfect love of God is, okay, to understand what this perfect love is. So this is not loving God more. This is not you loving God more, okay? This perfect love is not you loving God more. It is not you doing more. It is not you serving more. It is not you trying to achieve more. Okay, or, or somehow please God more. The Father is already pleased with you. And, and he's pleased with you because you have received his Son, Jesus Christ, as your Saviour. This is resting in the love of God for you. This is you resting in this finished work of the cross. This is you finding that place of rest. In 1 John 4 verse 10, it says this, This is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So what love is, is not us loving him more. It is his love for you and I. And when we understand this love of the Father for us, it casts out fear. Can you understand what I'm saying here? This seems simple, but I think this is the, 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 the marvel of God's word. Because he says it is... I want you to understand my love for you. And the more you, you settle of the love of God in your hearts, the less fear has a hold of you because perfect love casts out fear. Okay, so here, let me read that to you again. This is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see, this is the opposite of how we think many times. We, uh, we have this view um, that says that, that I, I am, I, I'm loving God. But God is saying, listen, I want you to see how much I love you. Okay? And when we, when we turn that around, all of a sudden, perfect love casts out fear. You see, we often work on the works side of things. I'm going to try and love God more. I've got to try and do more so that I can please God more. Therefore, I can feel his love more. Well, God's saying, no, don't do that. Let me just show you how much I love you and let that perfect love permeate you because I love you, is what God is saying. And as he loves us and as we receive that love, it casts out fear. You see, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10, it says this, that it pleased the Lord to crush Jesus. Okay, this is the whole chapter. The whole chapter 53 is talking about about Jesus and about what he did for us. But in there, there's this scripture that I underlined once, and I had a question mark next to it. And it says, it pleased the Lord to crush Jesus. And I couldn't fully understand that scripture. Why would it please the Father to have his son crushed for us? Well, the only way that I made sense of this was that, you, you know, that it would please God to crush Jesus. Would, 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 it was to see it through the lens of God's intense love for us. 
You see what I'm saying? So it pleased God to crush Jesus so that we could be set free from our sin and have relationship with him. So it pleased God. It, it, it pleases me to crush you, Jesus, so that you can have a relationship with me and find my love and understand my love and to be reunited in that love and, and, and have relationship again with me. You see, when Jesus was crushed on the cross, you know, I shared this once before at communion, but I, I'm, I'm so, I so see this picture in my mind. One day I was, I was reading the scripture and, and it was like I, I saw God in heaven just holding on to a, um, the curtain. And what happens is, you know, the curtain when Jesus was dying on the cross, the, the thing that separates us from the Father's presence and from his love was our sin. And so the moment that Jesus died on the cross, the moment that he gave up his spirit and said, it is finished, God had his hand on the curtain that separated and he tore it. Just the moment. It was not like he waited a week, oh, I might give him a couple more days and then tear it. No, the moment, the moment that Jesus died on the cross, the very second he gave up his spirit for us, God the Father tore that curtain of separation and said, no longer will there be a separation between me and my people anymore. And I tell you that that is the love of the Father. That is the love that the Father has towards us. So understanding this love is our, is our you know, we have different reference points. So we have many reference points that says, you know, I come from a difficult home or I come from a, an unloving home or I come from a family where, you know, there was not love or there was, there's all this manner of things that it's going on. And we have our reference points towards love. But, you know, we need to be able to, to say, you know what, I'm going to put that aside and I'm just going to see the Father's love towards me the way he truly loves me that I, I'm not going to reference the love of the Father from the, the reference points of my home or my upbringing or the tragedy or trauma that I have gone through in, 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 in being raised up, dragged up, beaten up, or whatever it is that you, has happened to you. you we, we need to stop looking at that and we need to start looking at the love of the Father and understand how much it is. It's a good thing that God wants us to do. He wants us to focus on His love for us, not what we see in the natural around us. You see, you know, um, uh, there was a, um, there's a, in 2022, I Googled something the other day and I, I thought, I want to I wanna find out what was the, what is the, the most uh, Googled verses of scripture in the Bible. And they only had up to 2022. So in, in 2022, the top 10 verses of, Bi of Bible searches in, in Google were, I'm only going to mention the first six. The first one, who, what do you, anyone can guess what the first one was? John 3.16. Hallelujah. That's my favorite. I would have Googled it again, you know, and I would have just, I would have said, yes, I want to know that one. Because John 3.16 was number one. Number one. They reckon it was like 80,000, uh, yeah, 80,000 times a day people tried to Google that. Can you believe that? John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, I just, I love that thought. I love that. That's the, that's the number one scripture Googled in, uh, in 2022. The second one was Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, you know, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. He says here that God wants, people are looking for their identity in God. Does God love me? Do I have a plan? Do I have a future in God? Yes, you do. God does love you. God cares for you. And then the fifth one was Isaiah 40, uh, 41.10. It says, Fear not, for I, the Lord, am with you, says the Lord. Fear not, fear not, for I, the Lord, am with you, says the Lord. So he's saying that was, that was number five. Number six was Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you everywhere you go. Hallelujah. You see this? You know, I love this because it is, it is what God's heart is that I am with you. I am for you. I want you. I want you to understand my love for you. Okay, so we see that this love is what we have to focus on. 
it's looking at Jesus and looking at the Father and saying, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the way I do business. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to look at you and I'm going to see your love for me and I'm going to live in that. Because the moment you start living in that love for him, for you, you begin to not worry about anything. Let me say that. Nothing you will worry about. When you, you will have no more fear when you are resting in the love of God because he loves you. He cares for you. He's with you everywhere you go. He wants to do you good. He's going to do you good. The Bible says, I, I, I sent you my son. What else can I do to prove my love for you and to prove to you that I am going to take care of you? See, this is the revelation that we need to get in the scripture concerning the love of the Father for us. Because this is the perfect love that pushes out, casts out fear. Once we are in that, you, there is, there's nothing that can touch you. There's nothing that can hold you. Nothing can get a hold of your heart and say, oh, what's going on? Nothing can get a hold of you when you are in the love of the Father. So number two is putting off fear involves a focus change. Okay. It involves a focus change. So um, what are we looking at? Okay. So is it the illogical darkness of fear or is it the light shining, you know, soul lifting focus of God's love for us? So what is it that we are looking at? We need to, we need to catch ourselves and say, All right, what am I looking at right now? And if I'm looking at something that's dark and illogical and, and makes no sense, I need to stop doing that and I need to start looking at the love of God and understand that He loves me and He loves you. You see, we have to set our mind on His love. See, right believing is right hearing, okay? If you, if you believe right, that's because you're hearing right. And I think that that's where we are as, as, as Christians. Sometimes we don't believe right. We don't believe right. We don't believe what the Word of God says. And if we believe right, if we believe what the Word of God says, well, then we'll live right. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, that, that to me is one of those, those anchor points in the Word of God that says, I believe what the Word of God says and I'm going to anchor myself in it and I'm going to believe what it says. And so... I see a story in, in the Bible in Blind Bartimaeus in, in uh, Luke chapter 18, verses 46 to 47. This is a man who could not see, okay? He could not see, but he could hear, okay? He heard, the Bible says in verse 46, that he heard that Jesus was walking past. So something happened. He couldn't see Jesus, but he could hear that the people saying, Jesus is walking past. And so, so he heard that. And as he heard that, he gets up and he casts off the, 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 the coat that he would hang on to, the, his security blanket. He cast that off, the Bible says, and he started yelling out, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy upon me. And the Bible tells us that people around him begin to shout out, be quiet, you know, shut up, um, you, know, you know, you're embarrassing us, you're doing all this stuff. And he, he cried out all the more, Jesus he just yells it out. Jesus, I son, Dave, have mercy upon me. Stop, he's basically saying. Stop. I want to, I want you. And so here he cast off fear of what people thought of him. He cast off fear. He cast off the circumstances. He cast off the religious stigma. He cast off all these things that what people were saying about him. He says, don't speak, don't shout, you're embarrassing us. He cast that fear off. And he walks up towards Jesus when he calls him because he heard something about Jesus. He heard something that was good about Jesus. He heard that he heals people. He heard that he's kind. He heard that he's compassionate. He heard that he is a loving God. And so he heard also that he was walking past. And he says, I'm going to reach out to him. And I'm going to cast off this fear. I'm going to cast off this, this thing that holds me back from reaching out to what, what God has for me. And he cries out, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy upon me. You know, amazing, amazing. And then Jesus stops in his tracks. And he just says, come over here. What can I do for you that I may see? And he says, your faith has made you well. Come. And the Bible tells us he walked with Jesus on. He has carried on with him and they lived. He, he came and danced. What about, what about all the other people on the wall? 
What about all the other blind people? What about the, other, the, 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 the disabled and all these other? Well, they could, have, they could have shouted out too. But Jesus sees his faith and he cast off the fear. And he comes running to Jesus. The other one is the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, verses 27 to 29. <clears throat> and, um, and, and the Bible tells us there that she heard about Jesus in verse 27. Again, she heard about Jesus. What are we listening to? What are, what's our focus on? Are we hearing the negative, the fearful, the, uh, or are we hearing what Jesus can do? Are we hearing what the Word of God says about you? You know what I mean? Are we just resting in what Jesus has said and done for you and me? Because this is what happens. You see, here, the woman with the issue of blood, whatever she heard, it impacted her faith and hope that she could be healed. You know, I don't know what she heard, but let's just, let's just put it out there that we could say that she heard certain things, that she was around long enough. She had 12 years of this, this, this infirmity where, where she was just constantly bleeding and she tried everything that she could, she could do to, to, to receive healing, but she could find none. And yet there was this filtering down through the, 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 the villages and the streets and the, the byways and the hedges and the way that Jesus is out there and he's doing something amazing and that he actually loves people. She probably heard things like, you know, that Jesus healed a leper. That Jesus didn't just heal a leper. Jesus actually put his arms around them and loved on them and healed them. That was unheard of. Nobody touched a leper in them days. It was like the most, no, you don't go there. It, you just don't do it. And she's thinking, I'm, I've got this illness that if I touch anybody, they're all unclean. They're all unclean. And yet Jesus can touch a leper. She heard that. She heard that. Faith begin to rise. She heard that. The fear of what this world was putting on her, you know, you don't touch the rabbis. You don't go next to the people. You stay outside the city. You're, a, you're unclean. You're not worthy of being healed. You're not worthy of being touched by God. You're not worthy of being prayed for because if anyone prays for you, they're going to touch you and then they're unclean. That's the, the logical fear that seems to be going out there saying this is what happens. But all of a sudden she's hearing the Word and the Word of God is pushing out fear. She's starting to hear that Jesus touches people, loves on people, embraces people, hugs the leper, just, just does a radical things. That he actually talks to the woman who's a prostitute. He, he, he helps her through the difficult times. He has compassion. He heals. He loves. He comforts. He, he just doesn't cause the children to be pushed away. He causes children to come close to him. He lays hands on them. He prays to them. Mate, this is not the rabbi that we're used to. This is a God who, who's, who's radically different. This is a God who loves people, loves you, loves me. And, and, and when we hear this love, it draws us to him, not pushes us away. You see, condemnation will push you away. God's love will draw you closer. You see, man in the garden, when we sinned, when we sin, the very first thing God does is He redeems us. Oh my God, it's just like it's everywhere in the Bible. Everywhere you see the love of God just being manifest. Adam and Eve, they came. They were created. They, they, they lived in the garden. God, in the cool of the evening, would come down and He would just have fellowship with them. What an awesome thing. Hallelujah. Just, you know, oh my goodness, how good would that be? You know? And here he was in the flesh, coming down, talking. How's things going, Adam? Anything you need? Oh, yeah, you know, a couple more fruit trees probably. You know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, just sit down and talk to me. Let me just touch the creator of the universe. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. He's awesome. Hallelujah. Whew, gee. No wonder he lived another 900 years after he was created because, you know, he was around Jesus and just touching him all the time. Are you there? Hallelujah. I want to touch you. So what happens is he's just sitting there. But when man sins and falls away from God, God doesn't go, oh, no, okay, look, this is, that, was, that was a plan. It was just, just a waste of time. No, God brings an animal, causes that animal to die, gets the skin of that animal and clothes man and gives them an ability to reconnect with God through the blood of an animal. God says, okay, it's not going to be like it used to be anymore, guys but it's still going to be. 
I want it to be. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make it happen. And then from, from Genesis to Revelation, it's about God getting a hold of you and I and bringing us closer every time we, we make a mistake, every time we, we fail, every time we do something that is not right, God brings us closer to Him. And He's bringing us closer. He's bringing us closer. So the woman with the issue of blood, what happens is she was able to cast off her religious fears and stigmas because she, she saw Jesus and she saw that He loved people. He, she saw the love of God. You know what I mean? She saw something amazing in Jesus that, that, he, that was around about, and she heard what it was. See, we read the Word of God, and we hear what Jesus is like. You know, Mark read out this morning, Matthew 11, Come unto me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What a promise from the Word. What a promise that God wants to say to you. If you're weary, you're heavy laden, come to me. Not run away from me, come to me. If there's anything that's going on in your life, come to me. And I'll read this scripture. It's in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. It says this, For this cause I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul starts off this verse by bowing his knee to Jesus. He bows his knee. He's, he's in awe of what, his, what this revelation is. He bows his knee. Go, oh, God, bow my knee to you, oh, God. You are so awesome. And he bows his knee to the Father, and he starts off this verse of Scripture by prayer and by worship. And he starts off in verse 15. For whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. In verse 16 that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened in might. That's not fear, in might. Through the spirit of the inner man. You see, in verse 17, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth and the height to know the love of God which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now that is worth parking on for a week. That scripture, it says that you be rooted and grounded in love. That, that is a great word, that, that word, you know, to be rooted and grounded, to be, to be so anchored in the word of God and anchored in this love. He said, I want you to be rooted and grounded in the love of the Father. Okay, it's not, it's not our love for him. It's his love for us that we are rooted and grounded in that, that we have got our, our, our it just goes right down into that rock. It's immovable. It's unshakable. It's, it's, it's something that is so rock solid. It's, it just goes down into that, into that bedrock of love and we are just anchored into that. That's what it says. So we, it's, it strengthens us. We're, it, it, we're, we're grounded in that. It's, it's like a tree planted by the rivers. It's just, it's just sucking up that juice. It's not worried about the, 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 the droughts or anything. It has got the water there. So we have the same thing, to be rooted and grounded in love. And verse 19, to know the love of God, which, which passes knowledge, to know His love for you, to know His love. To know his love for you, which passes knowledge, that, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. As we begin to know that God loves you, as you begin to reach out and touch God and just get to know his relation, our relationship with him, you, you, know, you become unmovable, you become unshakable, you become anchored so well in this love. And you know, I just, I just so... Want, want this to be a revelation, not just a message. I want it to be a revelation that, you know, that every single person in this house would have a revelation of this love of the Father to you. Uh, that, that is, that's my heart's desire. I just want, I want us to live in that place. I want us to be able to say, you know what, I, I'm so, so, you know, foundationally rocked into the Father's love. And as you, as you do that, the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. He will do a work in your life. He will comfort your heart. But we've got to, we've got to ask the question. And here's the prayer that I want to offer this morning. You know, if you want to know God in a deeper way, if you want to say, God, I want a taste of this love, 
I want to be able to live in this love, you know, or I want a greater revelation of this love, get out of your seats and come down the front here. Just, just come down because it's a good place to be. So if that's you, just come down. Why don't we all stand up to our feet to, to understand this love, to, to know this love. You know, it was about three or four years ago. Amen. It was a, it was a, it was a time when I was, uh, I was just going through some stuff and I, and I prayed a prayer. And I think that many times when we, when we reach out to God and we want God to be able to do something, I, I try to put it in a prayer. And, um, and as we put it in a prayer, the prayer went like this. I said, Father, show me your perfect love, Lord. Let me see it. Let the eyes of my, understand be, uh, my, eyes of my understanding be enlightened to it. Let me live in it. Let me rest in this love that you have shown me in Jesus, your son. And let me know without a doubt, God, that I can constantly rely on your love for me. And that was a prayer I prayed. And from that moment on till now, it's like God has just been, been downloading his love. So, so much so that it's quite overwhelming at times to be in the presence of God and to know his love. So I, I ask you, if you want to live in this place, if you want that, just come out of your seats. Come down the front. Amen. Come on. Just come out and I want you to pray this prayer. And this is the beginning of a prayer which will help you. It'll strengthen you. It'll begin to change the way you see things. It begins to change the way that you, you respond to tough circumstances, to situations and circumstances. It'll just do a good work in your heart, guys. I just so want this more than anything. So maybe you can just say a, a prayer. Those who are user out the front, those who are user behind, just say this prayer. Dear Lord, show me your perfect love. Let me see it. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened to it. Let me live in it, Lord. Let me rest in it, Lord. And let me know of this great love that you have given through Jesus Christ, your Son. I, I declare this over this congregation right now. And I speak, Father, that this would be a, a, a point where that the journey of knowing your great love for them would just start to permeate deep into their heart. And they would truly, Father, be transformed. Truly, Father, they would understand. Lord, that there would be times that they would weep, Father, in your presence. Because they just sense your great love for them. Lord, let this be something that is so deep in their hearts that, God, you desire. You desire that we live in this place. You desire that we, we, we operate from this place. You desire us to... to to function from a place of knowing your great love for us. And so, God, I declare this over this congregation. I declare this this morning. I thank you that you are such a good God. And, Lord, I so thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I just thank you. I just praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.